Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to TechGig webinar series, our endeavor to empower techies. We believe that sharing of knowledge is the key to enhance our skills and grow us as professionals. With this principle in mind, we have initiated a series of webinars conducted by industry experts to give you all a crisp insight on various domains. Now, today's uh, session is on porting your Apple iOS and Android apps to HTML5. This will be a continuation from yesterday's uh, session, which we had with uh, Shweta from Intel. Uh, so once again, uh, Shweta is joining in. I'll reintroduce her and the other speakers uh, for today's session. Shweta Dos, uh, she is a senior application engineer, Intel APAC. Um, she, she, is a, she is a senior application engineer at the Software and Service Group at Intel Corporation, working on enabling application on Intel Ultrabooks and the next generation Intel Core processors. Previously at Intel, Shweta was a technical consultant on the Intel performance team, where she worked on optimizing the ISV application for Intel architecture. Shweta holds a master's degree from the Portland State University. We also have uh, Zun Shun, who is a senior software engineer based uh, out of Shanghai. He works on Android and HTML5 technologies in Intel Software and Services Group. Before joining Intel in 2011, he worked for Sybase on database replication server development. He also received a PhD from Shanghai Jiaotong University with a focus on computer security. So without any further delay, um, I'll request Shweta to take over the presentation. And uh, the, uh, this, is, this is a request uh, for all the attendees. Um, you can start sending in the questions uh, maybe between 3.30 and 3.40. And our experts today will take up the questions after the presentation. Shweta, over to you. Thank you, Sri Lakna. So today's presentation is, uh, as Sri Lakna mentioned, is a different kind of different topic. Here we are going to talk about HTML5 tools. It's an HTML app portal tool which helps you to convert your uh, iOS application to HTML5. And the second tool that we are going to talk today is about Mailoon. Mailoon is a tool that helps you to convert your Android application to HTML5. Uh, the first tool, uh, this is an app portal tool. I'll cover that. And the second tool, uh, Mailoon, which will be covered by Zunsun. Um, so the basic agenda for today's uh, presentation webcast is that we'll talk about to briefly touch what is hybrid HTML5 apps. Uh, then we'll talk about the Intel HTML5 app portal tool. What are the features of it? And also we'll do a brief uh, uh, demo uh, to show you how to convert your iOS application to HTML5. After that, we'll talk about Melo, the features of Melo, and we also do a short demo to show how to convert your Android applications to HTML5. And we'll conclude the webcast with a summary. So what is HTML5? Why there is so much of uh, uh, hype about HTML5? So earlier, uh, well, the politicians used to give us rice, right? Nowadays, they're <laughs> moving to a where, uh, age where they're going to give us smartphones and devices. So if you look at that uh, paradigm, then there is a lot of mobile apps, uh, mobile phones, uh, devices in the market. Uh, it's five years back, having a mobile phone was a big thing. But now, having a mobile uh, phone is nothing. But now we are looking at what are the different apps that you are using in a mobile application, mobile device. So also when we go to a party, uh, the first uh, few uh, <coughs> minutes we'll discuss about the sari, about the jewelry. After that we'll directly shift about what are the different apps that each of us are using. So this, there's a nice shift from, uh, from each of us as the developers or users of the tool and of the application. So the, these are the different things uh, that HTML has done to us. And also I have a four-year-old son. Uh, he went to some place and he saw his friend playing a temple run on a phone. Then he came back to his house and he likes to play an iPad. He told that, oh, I want the same thing on an iPad too. So we, uh, device is not a thing. This application should be available on multiple platforms. That's the main thing going forward. Uh, so one nice thing about HTML5, it's an open source standard uh, that developers can write once and apply to multiple pro platforms, be it iOS or HTML5 or Windows 8. can be any of them. It's cross-platform. So one application, and write once and deploy everywhere. So that's the strategy. Why? That's the reason why HTML5 is picking up uh, so nicely. 
So let's now see what is a native app and how does it differentiate between a web app. So if you look at a native app, native app is basically, uh, or let's say if you're developing it on a iOS, so using the Apple Xcode developer, and you have to use Objective C to develop that application. In case of Android, you have to use the Eclipse and uh, also use Java as a programming language, right? So advantage of using a native app is that it's very fast. It responds very well on your uh, device, be it a tablet or a mobile device. And the performance of the application is very good. It also gives you access uh, to different different APIs that are present in the device. Let's say your application wants to use accelerometer, your application wants to use a camera. All these APIs are built into the uh, source code, let's say in or Java or Objective-C, and you can easily access that. Uh, those APIs. Another advantage is that it's very easy for you to put it on multiple uh, stores. If you develop an iOS application, you can easily put it to Apple. If you develop an uh, Android, then you can put it to Google Play. If you develop a Windows uh, 8 application, you can put it to win, uh, Windows uh, Store. So these are the advantages of native app. But the drawback uh, as a developer is that uh, you have to maintain multiple code bases and also learning different technologies for each of them. You might have to learn Java, you might have to learn uh, Xcode, uh, you might have to learn uh, programming C++ or .NET, whatever it is. So this makes it uh, very difficult for us to learn different different language and shifting between them, it's very difficult. So you might have to hire more people or that might be a reason that you have to learn different different technology and this makes, it's, it makes you like a walled garden. You'll not be able to take the full potential of a, uh, device capabilities. So with that in mind, uh, there are which we now have something called web apps. Uh, web apps is basically it's HTML5 applications with CSS and JavaScript. So the developer is very easy. HTML5 and CSS is very easy to learn compared to uh, Java or .NET, right? So uh, also that uh, uh, it's also very easy for you to put it in different different uh, stores. So since it's a mobile application, you just it runs through a browser. It can it can be a Chrome browser or IE browser, any of them. So the uh, has users you're not restricting yourself to uh, a particular store. Anything can uh, the user can developer can act, the user can access this application on multiple platforms. The drawback is that the application will not be able to access the native APIs in your application. Um, it, not, it might not be able to use the camera, it might not be able to use the accelerometer, or gyroscope, uh, um, ambient light, all those sensors are inaccessible. Now. That's uh, one of the drawbacks. To overcome this drawback, we have something called the hybrid HTML5. It's basically HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript together wrapped in a nice native uh, container. Uh, using this, it's very easy. You don't, it's just HTML5. You code it with HTML5 and also it uh, helps you to put it, to, it's portable. You can put, um, uh, take, uh, you can build it for different, different uh, stores, be it the uh, Apple Store or Android Store or Windows Store and you can easily do the store distribution of your application. It also lets you to access the APIs in, the, in your device. So that's the um, nice part of developing hybrid HTML5. So if you look at yesterday's session that we covered, we cover, covered about Intel. The yesterday session that we covered was about Intel XDK, which is a tool that helps you to develop, emulate, and test and build uh, HTML5 applications for different for different platforms. Uh, if you, I think there should be a recording available for the same thing. Probably can go back and look at it, or just Google for. Uh, Intel XDK, X as in uh, Xerox XDK, and that will help you to uh, understand more about the tool. So, uh, so in a summary, what is a hybrid application? Uh, so, hybrid application allows developers to build uh, applications with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and um, it can be easily distributed to different different uh, stores. So let's say you have an application. You have an iOS application already built into your application. Now your manager comes and says, oh, we are doing good in uh, um, the Apple Store. Let's put this application to an Android Store also. So you might want not want to recode or learn Java or Eclipse environment. So you, the good thing for you to do is that convert it into HTML, from Objective-C to HTML5. So how do you do that? An easy way to do is that using the Intel HTML App Portal tool. So this is the tool that I'm going to focus on the first part of the webcast. So I'm going to show you what are the features of the tool. Uh, so Intel HTML5 App Portal tool is a uh, tool which helps uh, developers uh, to automatically convert their uh, Objective-C code to HTML5. 
uh, it converts Apple, uh, let's say if your application has Objective-C code, it automatically converts into a HTML, JavaScript and HTML5. If your application also has some, let's say, uh, iOS API types and calls, that's convert, gets converted into JavaScript and HTML5 objects and calls. Let's say you're using the interface, you're building an interface, uh, iOS interface with using uh, Zip, which is the Apple Z, uh, Z code uh, builder then that will convert into HTML file and a corresponding CSS file. And at the end, it also gets con your objective code. It gets converted into, either you can convert into Visual Studio or you can convert into SDK project, uh, which can be open using our SDK tool. Uh, so here, I'm going to show you how to uh, do all of these steps. So, so uh, App Portal tool is essentially a source-to-source -source converter that can uh, handle the number of conversions that are happening between you from your Objective-C to a JavaScript. As a first step, what does it do? It, it has different, different modules in, in them. It has the Clank uh, parser, which takes your uh, source file, the .m extensions, and parses it, and it generates an abstract format file. The abstract format file checks if this module is a supported uh, API. If it's a supported API, it automatically gets converted to a JavaScript. If it's not a supported API, it's not, not the list of APIs that the um, App Portal tool supports, what it does, it generates a, it's an unsupported uh, API or a call, then it generates a to-do, a, a list of all the to-do files, to-do, let's say you have a name called N class, and that's not getting converted in the App Portal tool. What it generates at the end of it, it does is to-do underscore N, uh, N class dot JS file, something like that. And then you go back to that to-do file and see why, why is it, it also gives you a comment telling that why it's not getting supported. Uh, in your object to C code, you might have put a, um, let's say you might have a, put exception handling. So since that does not handle in your uh, HTML5 code, it might tell you that, or go back to this particular uh, module and take off the exception handling. Uh, something like that, as a simple example. So this is what happens at a high level. Um, uh, the tool also uses uh, uh, Clang uh, as a parser. It also uses a layer uh, D framework, and it also uses a jQuery mobile for creating widgets uh, that that will be rendered in your uh, final H uh, CSS and HTML5 uh, application. Uh, as you might know, if you're an iOS developer, the iOS will have thousands of methods and hundreds of different different types. Right? If you look closely, not all thousands of APIs that are used in your uh, iOS application will be uh, that you'll not be using all of them when you're developing an application. Only a few of them uh, will uh, will be uh, used when you're developing an application. Uh, this is a graph that shows uh, how many APIs need to be mapped in order to have a certain level of conversion of the APIs. Now, currently, our app Intel HTML5 app portal tool supports uh, the types and methods from UI kit, from the foundation kit, and a few classes from the core graphics library. So, if you look at a application, uh, a simple application which uses most of uh, methods and types from a UI kit, you can see that almost 80% of the conversion happens automatically, and there's very little for you to do. The to-do list is very small, and you have to go and uh, modify only a tiny bit. But let's say your application is using a lot of different different interfaces and uh, a lot a lot of them are calling from different methods. Then there might be a slice that it might convert only 50% of it. So there is little more work compared to uh, what uh, is required. But it's still this is the only tool that is available in the market which helps you to convert automatically from iOS to HTML5. The, you might know that the manual conversion is very very tedious and. Uh, uh, it's it's not easy to do that. So this is the first step that you can do to convert your application from uh, Object C to HTML5 and CSS JavaScript. So let's say uh, as particular API is not supported uh, in your application. What does it do? So as I told you earlier, it generates a to do uh, class uh, dot underscore class name dot js file, right? Uh, <coughs> Let's say in this example, I have the property set for show touch when highlighted uh, is set to yes. Let's say that particular property setter is not supported in my HTML file. So uh, if you look closely, these, uh, uh, then it automatically generates this uh, to-do file and it also tells me that this is how it should be generated, uh, handled in my uh, the, uh, JS uh, JavaScript file. Uh, also, the, the zip files that are there in your app code, how does the conversion happen? Uh, the, uh, usually, this is what happens is that as a first step, all of the zip file contents, uh, every time will, it will create a 
two kinds of files. One is HTML file and one is a CSS for each of the uh, zip files. Um, the HTML, this HTML file files use a jQuery markup to define the layouts uh, equal to the views in the original zip file. Uh, and also most of the events, event controller and objects that are present in your uh, uh, Apple code will be uh, changed, will be automatically transferred to a exib boilerplate uh, plate code dot js file. So this is the file which contains all the controller objects, connection logic between the objects and the event handlers uh, that were done, that were uh, first step, as a first step was done in, ob uh, in your objective C code. So for each of your application there's only one zip boilerplate code that has been generated. And if you look at that zip boilerplate then you'll understand what are the connections that are happening between my control by, uh, from uh, uh, connections and the events that are handled, how are they handled, all those details are embedded into this particular uh, zip boilerplate. Uh, at a high level, uh, architecture of this uh, app portal tool looks like uh, you have an, uh, uh, all the .m files that are present in an iOS gets automatically converted to a uh, JavaScript it gets converted to J script files and all the zip files that are present in your uh, iOS project gets converted to a HTML file and equivalent CSS file. Let's say you have a file called, uh, um, a zip file called, uh, uh, as a simple example maybe you can intel, intel.zip it gets converted into intel.html file and intel.css and all the resource file be it uh, media or uh, image or a um, sound base, wave file, all those things automatically get transferred to your um, HTML project and it also generated in dot index.html file which is the entry point for your HTML5 applications. Um, so without now let's see I'll do a demo to show you how to convert the application from um, iOS to HTML5. The sample that I'm showing uh, to you is available for free for download and if you go to our uh, search at the end of this presentation I have uh, put a link where, as where you can download it and it's the same link that is a sam the sample is available for you to play around also. So when you install you can see that the Intel HTML5 app portal tool uh, is available. Just click on it and now this is the first screen that comes up. It just tells it the, the same thing that I showed you. What is what is this tool about? So now, if I click on next, so here it asks for my Xcode project path. So I need to uh, look for a file which has the .xcode extension. So this is this example is called Balloon Ninja. What it does, it has a different different balloons that are coming up. You have to touch on the balloon and it pops up, pops out. So this is a simple example that we have. So you can you see that there's a Balloon Ninja dot Xcode project. You select that folder, and you also you uh, select how where do you want to store your converted the uh, HTML5 application. This is the default location that I just go with that. Uh, since I've already done played with it many times, it's just giving me a warning. Um, so now I do next and it, here it tells me what are the different modules that are present in my um, in my Xcode project, right? There is a balloon ninja app delegate.m, view controller.m, balloon view, these are different modules. Um, and, and you choose, if let's say you don't want to um, convert one of the modules, then you can uncheck it and just uh, leave it. Uh, then next, then now it, the, from earlier you saw that there were nine modules, it's passing each of the modules and uh, and uh, copying all of them and as the temporary place, uh, the C-Lang parts that I told you earlier, it, that's the uh, module that was active. After it finished parsing, next step it's going to process my zip files. What are the different zip files that are present in my uh, code? So now it's passing all the zip files. There are four zip files and it, uh, it's done parsing through all the zip files. As a next step, now it has to undo the API coverage. What are the APIs that are going to be covered, uh, uh, converted and what are the APIs that are not getting converted? That's what is going to do the analysis for the APIs. So now here it's going to extract all this information my, from my object to C code. And it's analyzing the API coverage list. And it uh, gives me telling that uh, the number of methods that it found is 180 of these methods and it tells me what are the different uh, methods that it found and what are the things that it's going to convert. 
So these are different methods for this particular example. So I just do. Then now it uh, now it started converting. It's translating all the API calls into HTML5 equivalent calls, and it's generating a corresponding JavaScript file. Hmm. It's, we'll get done with this because it doesn't take a long time. It's already 40 percent done. And it's now doing the last fixes in the end. So this is a tool, uh, this manual conversion would be very, very tedious. So this takes you the first step of converting most of the things. And it's a, look, you can look at the to-do list and figure out what was not converted and uh, get, uh, get done with that. The progress is 100 percent. It's more doing the last uh, uh, things. Now, if you look at that, the translation is completed. It f I finally finished translating from my objective code to HTML code. Uh, next, I click on next. Now, if you look at this screen, it's asking me, do you want to create a Intel SDK zip file or or, or you want to create a Microsoft Visual 2012 uh, project? Which one do I want? I'll choose both of them in this step. So now it's finally creating a uh, project report. Uh, it, here it tells me the JavaScript is created, Intel SDK bundle is created, and Microsoft Visual 2012 project is also created. Uh, this is an important uh, step. If you look at this uh, 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 screen, right, then you will figure it out. 53% of the iOS applications were successfully, translate, uh, successfully translated. Of them, UIKit, 98% coverage was done. The NS Foundation, 69%, and other libraries that were there in the original uh, objectives code, only 12% of them were done. And as a next step, it also gives me what are the different APIs that were not converted, and these are the things that I need to look. If you look at the to-do API, apt, VA list, or JS, NS past enumerator, NS mutable copying, or can you hear? AV audio player, all those things. So you can also, uh, also if you click on this, it uh, shows up. Uh, you can click on the, uh, let's, uh, you can click on the translation report and it will take me to your report. Uh, that is located on my local uh, drive. And here is the same thing. Uh, you can look at the different, uh, which are the corresponding, for the source, let's say I have a balloon.m file and what was the corresponding .js file. Um, and also, let's say ninja app delegate dot m. The corresponding was app delegate dot js. The corresponding in a zip file balloon ninja view, view controller dot zip. The corresponding is dot html and dot css. And uh, all the other uh, information is present in this translated tool. If I go back here, and if I look go back to my to do report, then it'll take me to a different html file, the to do report dot html file. And you can see that uh, what are the things that still have pending work to do. So these are the things, right? So there is like uh, about 15 of them that needs to be um, taken care of. Um, so next, let's go back and I'll now I'll say open my project folder, right? So now I've already converted it to a Visual Studio project and also my zip, uh, zip project, sorry, SDK project. So here it opened, uh, it's going to my, this is the path I gave. And here you can see there's an Intel SDK package. If you open this package with using your Intel XDK, then it'll open up, and then you can do all the emulation and building for different different uh, uh, <coughs> portals and all those things. But uh, let's go back to source. This is where my uh, Visual Studio projects are located. Here, if you see that there is a uh, Balloon Ninja .js project, you can open this in Visual Studio 2012 and view the results. And also the interesting part is the zip boilerplate code uh, .js that I was describing, which contains all the uh, connections between the different uh, controller and the events that are there in your uh, Apple source code. Now, uh, here, this is my what are the port? What are the porting supports? You already see that there are 132 items that have been converted. This is a different .js, different JS files that were con converted, and the resource. If you see that the balloon.png, balloon one, all these the wave file, all those resources automatically got copied from my Apple project to my 
a HTML5 project. And this is my pending uh, API calls to code. See, these are all the to-do lists that I have uh, that, I, that, that I need to take care of. Um, with this, I, was, uh, I think I explained the tool. Let me uh, conclude it. So this is how the final product will look like. Uh, on, the, on my left is how it looks on I, uh, iOS, and on my right it's how it looks on a Windows 8 uh, tablet. Um, if you look at a simple, this is a simple uh, catalog that was developed by one of my colleagues. Uh, it mostly uses the UI kit without any zip uh, files. And if you look at that, uh, the look and feel is almost similar to what is shown in the uh, iPhone. This is another example, which is a, a temperature convert application. The UI here was built using the interface filter. Um, here also most of the IPS were translated into uh, the HTML file. Uh, if you look at the sample, how the how my code looks like, uh, comparing object to C and JavaScript, uh, the slides are available for you. Maybe you can look uh, closely when you get the slides. Here, instead of uh, I have a in StarTex, when I come to HTML5, it's a var StarTex, and uh, instead of calling the function round, it calls math dot round, and all those minute details. So with this, I will pass it on to Zun. He's going to talk about. Uh, the Intel XDK. Uh, so I'm just going to talk about the mail one. Thank you, Shweta. Thank you. Uh, June, over to you. Okay. Thank you, Sudesha, for the nice introduction. Uh, I apologize. Uh, I'm Shun. I'm also working for Intel uh, uh, Software and Services Group. I'm very glad to be uh, to talk to all of you about the project I have been working on. So Melon is a Melon is a 2K that converts your Angel applications over to HTML5. So uh, Apparently, the objective is very similar to the app portal tool that Swisha just talked about, which is to reduce application migration costs uh, from Android to other platforms. And at a very high level, uh, this is how uh, Melon works, uh, converts your, converting your Android application over to HTML5. So, uh, it it takes uh, uh, two inputs and uh, one of them one of the inputs is uh, apparently the Android application project, uh, including the Java source code and the application resources, including images, layout files, and, and uh, of course the Android framework. Uh, sorry, Android manifest that each Android application has. And the other part of the input into the Melon Pauling tool is uh, what we call the and, uh, Framework Runtime API. The, the Melon run, uh, sorry, the Melon Runtime API is actually uh, a subset of the uh, Android Framework APIs. But uh, instead of implemented in Java, the Melon Runtime API is implemented in JavaScript, right? So when you convert your Android application, uh, the Melon Polling tool takes your Android application uh, project. It also takes the Melon Runtime API and outputs an HTML5 application. So in this HTML5 application, you have JavaScript code which is uh, basically a one-to-one -one mapping from the, uh, from the Java source code from the original uh, Android application. And it also has the application resources copied as is from the original, Java, uh, original Android application, including images, layout files, and uh, uh, the Android manifest. 
one thing to note is that uh, the coercion process is, uh, in most cases, it's not 100 uh, automatic. So if you are luck, uh, really lucky after the conversion, you have an HTML5 application that is up and running. But in most of the cases, you may need to fix some of the uh, compatibility issues. Because uh, the Melon Runtime API, although it implements a subset of the uh, Android Formal APIs, there are some features, for example, some of the hardware features, sensors, cameras, uh, or location, those related API that uh, we uh, do not support in Melon yet. So there will be compatibility issues that application developer need to uh, run and develop the HTML5 application and fix those uh, issues. So the actual conversion effort varies between each application. But uh, um, in one of our examples, uh, we estimated an Android application which would take um, half a year if uh, if we were going to if we were going to uh, convert the application manually to HTML5. So with our uh, Melon 2, it took us about uh, one and a half months for the conversion. So uh, it, it, uh, the Melon 2 indeed uh, reduced the uh, migration cost significantly. So, as we mentioned, Melon supports a subset of the Android front APIs, but uh, not all of them. So, which are some of the that we, are, we already support? Um, uh, of course, we support the most fundamental features, which are creating and finishing activities the activity uh, management functionality. And we also support the UI and the widgets uh, functionalities pretty well. And we also support uh, 2D and 3D graphics uh, using Canvas and the WebGL. And in this month, we also added support to basic HTTP networking functionality. So, these are some of the, of the uh, important Android framework features we already support. And we have some features uh, uh, to, to uh, appear in the next uh, couple of months, uh, including the database support and the native code support. And because we are converting from uh, two different programming languages, namely from Java to JavaScript, there are some uh, inherited uh, differences between the two languages and program models. So, uh, so there will be, for example, the multi multi process uh, differences, because in Java you can do multi-processing and do multi-threading. But JavaScript is, is, is uh, uh, naturally a, it's a single-threaded program languages. So if your Android application is heavily multi-processed or multi-threaded, there will be some uh, compatibility issues. And there is also an issue with the Bitwise operators because in JavaScript, bitwise operators are always 30, most cases it's uh, 32 bit uh, uh, capable. So when you do bitwise operators in your Android application, after converting it to HTML5, there will also be some issues. And for those of the known incompatibility issues, 
we have a user menu uh, on our project website that uh, uh, we try to document all of the, the no income beta issues. So uh, developers can go ahead and download the copy of the tool and the user menu and uh, see uh, see the issues for for themselves and uh, fix those. So this slide lists some of the key features of Melon that we think are important to developers. First of all, Melon is based on Eclipse, uh, which means uh, uh, Melon will be very easy for Android developers to use because uh, uh, because developers do not need to learn about a brand new IDE. It's uh, in their favorite ID Eclipse. And Melon also offers JavaScript minification functionality, uh, which means uh, Melon will try to uh, compress your converted JavaScript code in order to reduce the footprint of the application. This is important because when your application, when your web application is downloaded from uh, servers, the footprint of your application or the size of uh, the application can have significant uh, impact on the performance. Right? So this is also an important feature. Uh, we also have uh, we also have what we call a hybrid programming model, meaning that application developers can inline, can write inline the JavaScript code in uh, Java code of the original uh, Android project. So this feature is very similar to the situation where uh, you can write inline assembly in C code or uh, C++, C++ code. So this is important because this enables Melon to uh, leverage JavaScript and the DOM functionalities. For example, it enables Melon to uh, map a button from Android UI to a button uh, in HTML DOM. It offer, also offers developer flexibility in terms of programming languages of their choice. Uh, for example, if developer is not happy with, with the JavaScript uh, generated by Melon, he or she can uh, write JavaScript code manually and uh, embed, the, embed his or her JavaScript code into the original original Java file, original uh, Android application code. And uh, last but not least, uh, Melon also has a feature which we call incompatibility tolerance and a partial conversion. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, there will uh, most certainly be incompatibility issues when you convert your Android application over to HTML file because uh, usually you, your application will use some of the Android framework APIs that Melon doesn't support yet. So this feature means that uh, you do not have to fix all the incompatibility issues before you can try the conversion before you can uh, try to convert the HTML5 application. So this feature is important because it saves developers converting efforts and uh, it also justifies your efforts spent on converting the application early on. Right. So Using Melon is actually very easy and simple. 
first you just install Melon as a normal Eclipse plugin. And as we mentioned earlier, there is a Melon Runtime API, or here we call the Melon SDK. So after you uh, install the Eclipse plugin, you, you need to uh, configure the location of the Melon SDK or the location of the Melon Runtime API in your preference of, of your Eclipse. And after that, you can convert your NG application to Melon. And uh, you can then build and run your HTML5 application. So later on, I will uh, show a brief demo of uh, some of the, the operations. And in case you are wondering, Melon is uh, already released to public, but uh, it's not a, a uh, very stable yet. It's a development version. So you can go to our uh, project website and download the copy and have a try for yourself. You can also subscribe to our mailing, mailing list and uh, uh, interact with us uh, there. For the time being, the tool is freely available to the developer community. This slide uh, shows uh, so this slide shows some of the applications we have converted using, using the tool. Uh, on the left side of the page, uh, it lists some of the sample applications from Android SDK that we have converted. So, which means these applications are available to everyone uh, with Android SDK and uh, uh, Android development environment set up for them. And we also have tried the Melon tool on some of the third-party open source applications. And uh, uh, later on, I will uh, show you uh, some of them. So now, let's, uh, see, let me see, show you uh, how the tool works. So, as mentioned, the Melon So, as mentioned, the Melon is uh, an Eclipse plugin. So, uh, here I have a Snake application, Angel application, which is uh, one of the sample applications from uh, Angel SDK. And uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, I, uh, of course, I have already installed the, uh, the Melon porting to into this uh, Eclipse installation, and uh, and I, ha I have configured the location for the Melon runtime API here properly, so that uh, we can go ahead and use this uh, tool to convert your convert my application. And the first app, first I'm going to right click on the Angel application. And in the pop-up menu, I will click on Convert to Melon Project.
And uh, here uh, you can choose whether or not you want to enable partial conversion, which is uh, a feature that uh, for the unsupported APIs or missing APIs, it can generate stop functions or stop classes for, for you. So here I will select enable partial conversion and click on next. So now my Android project has been converted over to Melon project, but uh, uh, at the time being, it's still an, uh, it's still a Java project because uh, we haven't converted the Java source code over to JavaScript source code yet. And in the next step, I will run the project as Melon application. which is where your Java source code is translated to JavaScript source code. Here, an HTML file is also generated as an entrance point for the converted HTML file application. And I'm going to copy the location of the generated HTML file and open it in the in the Chrome browser. So as you can see, the application is already up and running. And it's uh, just a very simple uh, snake game. Now, in case you are wondering, I also have an uh, Android uh, emulator running to show what uh, the application looks like on Android devices. So here we have the uh, original Android application running on Android emulator and uh, we also have the converted HTML5 application running on Chrome browser. As you can see, the look and feel and the experience is uh, very similar between the original one and the, the converted HTML one. So this is the first demo and uh, let me show you some other applications we have converted. Now this is a, a snooker game. And in this slide I have a, a, a screen snapshot of the original Android application running on an Android device. And here I have some of the uh, converted Android applications showing on, on this uh, Melon home screen. And this is the one converted from the uh, Android Snooker game. I will play it a little, a little bit.
So I think this concludes my part of the presentation too. So uh, to wrap up, HTML5 is the future trend in the world of application development as a uh, uh, quickly grows in terms of uh, programming capability in terms of uh, performance and as its uh, closest gap with uh, other native uh, platforms. And Intel is uh, committed to HTML5 technologies and uh, the HTML5 ecosystem. We have introduced it to you two of the tools that uh, we are working on at Intel. One is the App Porter and the other is the Melon. Both of them are freely available uh, to the developer community. But please keep in mind that uh, both tools are uh, still under development. So, with that, I think I will uh, turn control back to uh, Suisha. Thank you so much uh, for the presentation, uh, Zun. I have okay. already um, assigned you a couple of questions. Um, okay. Some of the questions which I assigned to Shweta, she has uh, started answering them on the, on the questions window itself. So, uh, for the timing, if you could take up the questions that I have assigned to you. Uh -huh. uh, the first question, the qu first question is that from where I can download the Melo? So, uh, so the Melo project website is uh, zero one dot org backslash Melo. So you can go to. Uh, or website and download a copy. Right. And the second question is that how are we going to manage database with our application as Melon does not support it? Um, I think there are uh, one of, one of the options is that uh, HTML5 uh, provides a programming API called uh, uh, local storage or something like that. So basically, uh, you can use the local storage as a local file system or or something like that. So. It provides uh, you know, provides functionality to store uh, some of the data on local uh, on local client. Okay. Actually, we are planning to implement the database functionality on top of the the uh, local storage API. Okay. So the next question is, what about vice versa HTML5 to Objective-C and to Android? And uh, the the people answering, uh, the people asking this question is an iOS developer. Um, I think there is a project uh, PhoneGap that can can uh, package your HTML5 application to uh, uh, native ecosystem to iOS and to Android. Right? So you can use Comgap. And uh, the Intel HTML5 development environment XDK, I think, uh, is also capable of doing this kind of uh, uh, job. Right. Svisha, do you want to uh, add on that? 
Swisha? Yeah. No, 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 nothing, cousin. Okay. So, maybe I can take some of the questions for the audience. Sure. I have to, uh, I've started typing and sending it privately also, but um, yeah. the, some of the questions that I have is um, some of the major of some of the questions that frequently asked from here is that uh, how to control the to-do list file, like how to refer which which part is still left, and some of the people don't want to implement the features that are listed in uh, to-do file. They are just uh, they're happy with whatever it's converted, and they, they just want to leave it uh, in that itself. So to answer that question, right? To do is a list of things that you have to uh, you are uh, still missing in your code. So, uh, some of the things, let's say, in, for the balloon example that I showed you, what was missing in that part is that sound. When I uh, touched the balloon, it was popping up, and the sound was coming. The sound pop sound was coming. When it uh, get caught converted to HTML5, that part, uh, the sound part, was not getting uh, converted. So if you still have, if you if you, let's say you because of lack of time or something else, you don't want to implement those functions, or you let's say you're not comfortable with HTML. You can just leave it like that. The application HTML5 application will still run, but it will miss some of the functionalities uh, that the original iOS application will have. It. Uh, that's the difference. Um, so it's nice to have uh, implement all the features that are listed in the to-do list, so that you have much, uh, you have the exactly same uh, functionality that the original iOS application had. Um, so the another uh, frequently most of the people are asking is that. Uh, what is the difference between uh, this tool and the phone gap uh, tool? Uh, the phone gap. So basically, this uh, the app portal tool that we spoke about, the uh, iOS app portal and the Mailoon. It helps you to source to source conversion tool. It doesn't help you to develop applications, but in case of phone gap, it's an uh, app, uh, it helps you to build applications, hybrid and HTML5 applications, which lets you to access the native APIs that are present in your device. It's a uh, uh, this is, but in case which we talk spoke about, it's a conversion tool. That's a major difference uh, between these two. Uh, another question that people are asking is that uh, uh, does Intel ch charge uh, for these uh, tools? Uh, no, it, currently both of them are uh, free, uh, available for free. And uh, the, currently, the app portal tool is available in beta, but we are expecting uh, the final version to be available uh, around uh, uh, mid of next year. So that's the thing. So another question from Sri Watson is that his question is that he wants to know if we can convert his Windows. Uh, Windows Phone 8 applications into HTML5. Uh, Sri Watson, we currently we just have developed two tools, which are from iOS to HTML5 and Android to HTML5. So currently we don't have uh, uh, the tool that does it for you. At least from Intel, uh, we don't have one. But I don't know if there is something external available which helps you to do that. I highly doubt that to be there. And. Uh, I'll send you a link to all of them. This is the one of the uh, participants uh, told that he's he needs more reading material about uh, uh, about Intel and HTML5. So I'll send it to all of you. This is the Intel HTML. If you go to software.intel.com/html5, uh, uh, that's the link. It has all the good documentation on uh, uh, where to access, uh, where to get more information about the Intel XDK or the Intel App Portal tool, and all the samples. And there are a lot of people have written documentation also. And if you go to the same uh, website, there is an Intel forum. So you can go to the forum and post any questions. And there's a uh, people there who are going to respond very quickly to you. So I recommend that you go to the forum also and, uh, to get your answers, question answered. Uh, sorry, we are getting a lot of questions, uh, but we are uh, short of time. So we'll try to answer all of the questions uh, that we have after the webcast is over. Uh, probably I'll get a list of all the questions and we will answer it offline also. Um, but another way to reach quickly is to look at the forums. Um, thank you, thank you, Shweta. Maybe Zun, maybe yeah. This, this is then maybe a last question. His question is: Can I port Android apps without having get source code? Means from .apk to HTML5. Yeah, the situation is uh, similar to App Potter. Both of the tools work on uh, source code. So we don't have this functionality yet. 
Zun, would you want to take up one last question? Uh, let me uh, check. Uh, how there are a lot of questions uh, which are pouring in. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So How just does Menu support does Menu support Android based libraries like uh, an engine to be used the HTML file? Uh, I, I think the answer would be not yet because uh, the the Menu runtime API is a subset of the Android framework APIs and. Uh, there are a lot of uh, third-party libraries that are very popular among Android developers, but uh, uh, we don't support them yet. So, so the question to the, the answer to Sahai Salad's question is uh, not yet. I think uh, with that. Okay. Uh, we have come to the end of uh, today's session. Um, thank you so much, Shweta and Zone, for taking time out of your busy schedule once once again and uh, taking us through this valuable and insightful presentation. Um, for all for all those who attended to today's session, the recording the recorded version will be available on techgeek.com tomorrow. And if you want to take a look at the presentation which happened yesterday, you can also uh, log in. Um, and find the recorded version on techgeek.com as well. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Shweta and Zun, for your participation. And uh, thank you so much once again, all the attendees, for your support uh, for making this webinar uh, a great success. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Shweta. Bye, Zun. Bye.